Let's talk about lab testing for guys with low testosterone symptoms. So what do guys generally has, have to ask for their doctor to test? So that's a good question. And it's going to have mostly a two part answer. If we look at the big picture, this is the TRT and hormone optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell and you'll be on your way. I'm going to keep it simple so that we don't start dissecting each one of the, the answers of the two parts, but the two parts are essentially think of a why you've got a road that you want to go down, but you've got two branches leading in branch. Number one, you have to first determine, do I want to go and ask my family physician or an endocrinologist who are probably not going to do the best job at managing my protocols and my needs. If in fact I do come back low, let alone will they be able to determine if my deficiencies are relevant enough to be treated. And then lastly, are they an insurance based practice, which is going to be bound by insurance guidelines to even determine if I qualify for treatment. So that is question number one, because understand that when a medical provider goes and runs a lab, they are liable to assess that lab, to interpret that lab, and then to give you the relevant information of that lab. And if that is not something that they are comfortable doing in a specific field, they're going to refrain from even running these tests. So for any guys out there who have said, well, I've asked my doctor to check this and he didn't want to run it. This is not your doctor trying to give you a hard time per se. This is your doctor in a roundabout way telling you if that came back with an issue, I have no idea how to fix it. So I'd rather not even get involved in the first place because they are on the hook for everything they test because they couldn't be, uh, liable for mal malpractice if they, in essence, ran something, it came back flagged, and they ignored it, and then sent you off, and then you ran into trouble in the future. So understand that first and foremost, make sure that you choose the provider who is even going to run this test in the first place wisely. So that is your first channel. Your second channel is going to be understanding what labs you need to run. And these labs, I like to keep simple for the initial baseline for a number of reasons. Reason number one is cost. Labs are not that cheap to run once you start getting extensive. Yes, the more information we have and the more input into the data, the better job we can do it truly optimizing someone's health. The problem is that when you run the kitchen sink right out of the gate, you're going to end up spending a ton of money because understand that in a well visit or an annual lab, your insurance is only going to cover necessities. And these necessities have to be documented and each and every one has a diagnostic code and it has a specific reimbursement rate. And if that diagnostic code is not accepted based on the symptoms presented, that lab will get kicked back and you are going to receive a hefty bill. And I've seen bills uh, on the retail end because the lab is not gonna give you the same wholesale discount that the doctor's office receives. You're gonna receive a bill in the mail for 1,000, 1,500, $2,000, and you're gonna end up in collections over this. So before you go out saying test everything, understand that you don't always have to do this. So if you're symptomatic, what I like to do as a baseline is I'm going to give you the basics and I'm going to explain to you why. We like to run total testosterone. Total testosterone is a good indicator of functional output of your HPTA. While total testosterone does not mean tangible testosterone per se, it does show how much are you actually producing. And if that in and of itself is deficient, we already know we have a problem that we have to address. If it is not deficient, there are still other metrics we're going to look in and that is where we're going to go next. After we run total testosterone, a lot of guys like to run free testosterone. Personally, I'm not a big fan of running direct free T. Direct free T is a snapshot of a piece of serum and how much free T is in it. There have been reports of it being completely flawed. We know that free testosterone is a simple formula. It is total testosterone minus bound testosterone. Now what binds testosterone? It's essentially two proteins in your, horn, in your, in your serum. You have albumin and you have SHBG, also known as sex hormone binding globulin. While albumin tends to lightly bound, uh, SHBG tends to strongly bind. Now, albumin bound testosterone plus free testosterone is what's known as bioavailable. We don't get too hung up on the bioavailable. We really try to look more at the free. And the free T is very easy to calculate without getting complex into the formula, which I'm happy to provide if asked, but it's a fairly complex formula. There are apps now you could download on your phone. Uh, one is, I believe it's called uh, free T calc 
or T-calc, it's very simple. You punch in the albumin, you punch in the SHBG, the total T, you convert all the units. I personally like to use nanograms per deciliter here in the US because it's a pretty, excuse me, pretty standard. And it gives you your free T levels. Uh, so we don't run direct free T, we do run SHBG because that allows us to input this into the, into the calculator and it also helps us determine a lot of other underlying factors to help optimize an individual. And I invite everyone to watch our SHBG video on this channel. I believe we have two of them. One is a long version, one is a short version. And those are gonna help you out as well with understanding more about this. So total TSHBG. Another thing that we run is called PSA. PSA is prostate specific antigen. Testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. Let me reiterate this. Dr. Grant, who's a phenomenal urologist out of Texas, keeps tooting the horn on this. This is old science, old folktale, all the new researches from Dr. Morgan Toller in Boston keep showing the same thing. Testosterone and DHT do not cause prostate cancer. Why do we check prostate? Twofold, first and foremost, unfortunately, the legal implications of medicine have not yet caught up with the science implications of medicine. So if you don't check PSA, and someone does have to come down in the future with some form of a prostate issue, guess where they're going to throw the blame? They're going to say it's your testosterone. And if you haven't done your due diligence, and if you haven't documented, and you haven't charted this correctly along the way, you're going to be held liable. Because in the medicine world, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. I don't care what we say on the phone. I don't care what we say face to face. I don't care how many times you watch the YouTube video. If it's not documented in your medical record, it did not happen. So we have the lab for PSA, we document it, we have a conversation, we document the findings of the conversation and the story. What we do look for in PSA is a change in a short period of time. If your PSA is 4.5 and you have done all of the protocols that we provided you prior to getting your blood drawn for PSA in order to ensure that it is not a transient spike and it is fairly consistent, we will have you repeat PSA a week later under the same conditions and it may come back lower, in which case it tells us it was transient. It may not come back lower. If you've ran your PSA two or three times over the course of a month, and it's 4.5 4 and you have no issues, that's your number. No big deal. You're at 4.5. That is not indicative of not being qualified for TRT. Insurance may tell you so, but this is another reason we don't work with them. We don't want our hands shackled. So you get on TRT, you come in in eight weeks, you're doing a follow-up lab, and now your PSA is nine. That's a problem. Now we have to assess further. We may refer it out to urology. We may want to do uh, some scans and, and so forth. So what we're looking for is not necessarily your starting number. We're looking for rapid and significant changes in a short period of time. So that is another reason. And that's why PSA is important. So we've got total T, we've got SHBG, we have PSA. Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip, and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. LH and FSH. Uh, you can go into another video that we've made recently, which discusses the gonadotropins. And without boring you too much on those, these are the tropic signals from the pituitary that stimulate testicular function. We run them on the baseline only. Why? Once you start T, they're going to go to zero or close to it. Before you start T, they help us determine whether you're primary or secondary hypogonadal. And the reason that's important is if I know your testicles are functioning really well and your problem is in your pituitary gland, I can substitute a few other medications to help you preserve fertility. Whereas if you're a strong primary with an LH of 20 and a T of 150, your testicles are dead and no amount of secretagogues or analogs like HCG, for example, are ever going to do a damn thing for you. So we get one chance to test your gonadotropin levels and this is the time to do it. It's your baseline. So now we got total T, we got SHBG, we got PSA, we got LH, we got FSH. Finally, one of the very, very important things that, again, we need to do on baseline, and this is crucial, is a CBC with differential with platelets. Here's the reason why. When I get your baseline CBC, I am establishing the most important aspect of potential side effects that will need to be managed over the course of your treatment. And that is what we call H&H, &H, hemoglobin hematocrit. 
production of erythrocytes, which is red blood cells, which may over time cause the increase of blood viscosity, which may be concerning, may not be concerning, depending on the root cause. Secondary erythrocytosis, generally in an otherwise healthy male with proper blood pressure and good health, active lifestyle, proper nutrition and good sleep is not necessarily concerning. You're obese, you're a diabetic, you're hypertensive, you have elevated platelets, you have a history of heart disease, you have dyslipidemia, your h and concerns me. Because if you're starting at a hemoglobin of 18 and hematocrit at 53 and you're still deficient in androgens, guess what's gonna happen six months after you begin your therapy? You're at risk for a DVT, you're at risk for a stroke, you're at risk for an MI, guess who's gonna be liable for that? So if we don't have your CBC documented and charted correctly, that's a problem. Very important to run it. Why did I mention run your CBC with differential and platelets? Again, platelets are coagulative. They are what causes the intrinsic blood vessel clotting. So when you do have plaque or you do have an injury inside the endothelium, it's the platelets that rush in there and create this little blockage. It's not the erythrocytes. The problem is when you have the erythrocytes and you're pumping blood through this tube, and now that tube diameter is reduced by 30%, your heart has to work a lot harder to get that in there because the pressure is increased. So you're at much higher risk if your platelets are elevated, okay? So this may also help to uncover other issues. We have run CBCs before that determined that an individual had leukemia and he wasn't even aware because his white blood count came back at 88, all right? You may, you may have an infection you're unaware of. So the CBC really helps us get started before we even get started and then track and trend over time as your treatment goes on. Differential gives you a breakdown of various different cells, which again, if you have a good hematologist or a proper provider who understands how to read these labs and uh, I'm baffled by how many pri uh, you know, primary care physicians really not, have no idea how to read a differential. Uh, you know, neutrophils are the most abundant in, uh, in, 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 in your blood. And then, you know, you have, you have, you know, about a dozen different types of blood cells and they give you the percentages and they give you the distribution of weighted percentages. And these are things that, again, it costs $2 to add a differential to a CBC. So running a CBC, I see all the time guys come in transfer patients and I'm looking at their labs from another clinic and I see the CBC and there's like four, four re re results on there. And I say, where's your diff? And they say, this is what they ran. They literally just had to check off with diff and it's a $2 charge. And you're leaving, you know, 40, 50% of your tools off the table. You don't go into a job with your tool belt in your car. You bring your tools with you. So in short, again, run your total T, run your SHBG, run your PSA, your LH, your FSH, and lastly, CBC with platelets and differential, please. And that is the basics. We can really get fancy with this. There's just no need. So no liver testing, so no kidney uh, parameters. This, this, so those would be like a phase two. If someone wants to spend the money, absolutely do what's called a CMP14. It's a complete, it's a 14 panel, complete metabolic panel. It's liver and kidney function. In an otherwise healthy guy, not that big a deal. Uh, when guys have an insurance based uh, lab and it's in network, yeah, we can certainly run CMP and I'm a big fan of it. I'm giving guys the basics. I'm going on a limb here and saying, this is a cash based patient. He, he, you know, money's tight. He wants to check his T. What are the must haves? Like, in other words, if we're missing any of the ones I mentioned, we can't help you. Mm -hmm. Will we do a better job with a CMP? Yeah, we may find the uh, elevated liver enzymes. Uh, we may find, you know, a BUN issue or, or, or a renal condition or elevated creatinine, which again, can be flawed by, by muscle tone. Uh, we may find the EGFR that's too low. We may find these things. Um, and I do encourage guys, if they, if they have the means to do it or they have good insurance to do it, yes, run a CMP. You know, run a lipid panel, run, run a, a D25 hydroxy which many guys are often deficient in. You know, run as much as you can. Run an IGF-1 if it's gonna be covered. But again, each one is gonna require a diagnostic code and you know, they're not always gonna pick it up and I don't want guys getting $2,000 bills. So we, we tend to do a pretty good job with the diagnosis. We tend to put our intake forms in a way where the questions asked may allow us, you know, because you can't lead a patient. You can't say, oh, you know, you're feeling this, right? Yeah, yeah, say yeah, you know. You can't do that, right? Just just to, to get the insurance to pay. But we do get a pretty extensive intake in office so that when we see certain things and certain triggers come up in their analysis, we could say, you know, this test would be good and here's the reason why. And then we can document that to the insurance company when we run the lab 
because while we don't take insurance, our lab does. So we can use the insurance for the labs for guys who have the coverage in network and really get them the, 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 the kitchen sink on the labs. And then we can do a better job for them. Absolutely. We have a ton of labs, but we can spend the next hour and, and, and 30 minutes going over labs and still only hit 50% of them. I think what I've given is literally the basics that are sufficient to really get a good picture of where you are from a sex hormone standpoint. Okay, great, Gil. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And talk to you next time. You got it. And now do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails and go watch another video to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thank you.